In this video, I want to talk about a few best practices in Power Query. You'll learn the concept of query staging, you'll learn how to organize your queries really well, and you'll also learn about the concept of streaming. No further ado, let's start. Let's just start with the first best practice and the concept of a staging. What I mean by that is that the result of one query is then used by several other queries. And in theory, it works something like this. So let's just say that you're trying to connect to a folder. So you would have one query set up to get the address of the folder. Once you have connected to the folder, which is right here. Now, this could be a folder. This could be a file. Doesn't matter. But let's just say that we have a folder here. Once you connect to that folder, there could perhaps be many, many files in that folder. And those files are right here. Now, let's just say that you want to try to work work with one particular file and within that that particular data of that file is then connected to many other queries right here and then you want to maybe pick up one particular query and then work further with that but the benefit of staging is that once you actually refresh all of these queries the source only gets refreshed once because you have not connected to the source in every single query that you have made it actually makes it more efficient how that is done in practice let's just take a look so I'm gonna go ahead and first start to create a parameter the parameter could hold the value of an Excel file. It could hold the value of the folder. Doesn't matter. We'll just go with an Excel file at the moment. So I'm going to open up Power Query. Power Query is already open. So in the Home tab, we have Manage Parameters on the right. And I'm just going to click on a new parameter and actually create a parameter called the file. In the current value of the parameter, I will declare what the file is. And this is my file that I'm working with. I'm going to click on OK. And that creates the file. Now, how does it help? In case I want to change the file or the location of the file gets changed, I can just just make the change in one single place and all the queries linked to this particular parameter are going to get updated automatically. Now, let's just set up another query that uses this file parameter to call the data inside of that Excel file. Now, I can just go ahead and right click and say that I want to make a new query, click on other sources and create a blank query. And since I'm a big proponent of the M language, I'm going to write some formulas to be able to call that file. Now, you could obviously do that using the user interface as well. But hey, why not learn a few formulas instead? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to maybe rename this query as as a source file and I'm going to go ahead and start to write a function called file.contents and within that I am going to maybe feed the parameter which is this particular file parameter that I have made and I'm just going to go ahead and start to write the file parameter press enter and what this actually does is now it automatically recognizes that obviously the file is an excel file and it wraps the file.contents function around the excel.workbook function to get the ingredients or, or the sheets of that file now there is a possibility that in the excel file that we have connected to there could be multiple sheets I just have got one sheet uh, which is sheet one and there could be multiple sheets in your Excel file if you're connecting to the folder the folder could have multiple Excel files or CSV files and you might want to work with all of them or some of them now let's just create another query and move to the next level of the staging we have moved on from staging the folder or the source data now let's just see in case you want to implement staging within the query how do you do that so that the result of the query can be used multiple times. Now, here is a query called data and this particular query in the source step is linked to the source file, which is Excel file that we created, which is right here. And this is just the connection that we have made to the file right here. Now, once we connect to the Excel file, I can obviously go ahead and navigate to any of the sheets that I want. Now, this could be navigation to a file in case you're working with a folder. This could be navigation to a sheet in case you're working with a single Excel file. So I navigate to a sheet. Now, I do a bunch of steps right here in order to cleanse my data and get to the transformation that I want. And here is the final data, which is where we have the year, we have the quarter, we have the material, and what is the total value of that? And that's my final step. Now, let's just say that I'm trying to work out something. And in case I want to stage this query, that means I want one of this particular step to be extracted as an intermediary step and to be used once again in another query of mine. Now, there are two ways to do that. One is that, hey, you could probably duplicate this entire query. So I can just go ahead, say right click, and I can say duplicate. That is one way to go about it. And then I can duplicate the query and then I can just delete all of the steps and extract the change type step or you can actually break the query into two parts that means you do it up until here and then you do another query and that's a mess that I don't really want to get into another very interesting way to get one of the intermediary steps let's say change type from this particular query without actually breaking the query is to use the meta keyword that allows you to stage the queries let me help you understand how that works so what we are going to do is we're going to take this particular step store this entire result of the step temporarily 
in this particular step which is group rows and then I will call the group row step and call that step that I have stored. How will all of that work? That works through the keyword called meta. Let me demonstrate that to you. So I'm just going to go to the last step of the query which is group rows and in the formula bar after the formula ends I'm going to go ahead and start to write the meta keyword. That means remember something. Now for the meta keyword to work I'm going to create a record and in the record I will say that hey one of the step that I'm just trying to work with is nothing but the change type step which is this particular step which is right here and the whatever the value of this particular step is I have stored in the name called the step which is technically a field and all of this is stored in meta that means it's in the memory not physically present on the screen once you commit on this the result doesn't change it's the very same result no changes whatsoever and you get the very same query now the thing is that once you actually go ahead and right click and reference this particular query and I say that hey I want to reference so I can just call this as a reference once you actually reference this particular query it still actually gives you the last group row step of this particular query but what I want to extract is the change type step and how do I do that I'll have to retrieve the data from the meta that I stored how do I do that I'm going to go ahead and say something like value dot meta data in the value dot metadata function I'm just going to go ahead and store the data which is nothing but this particular query and this is going to extract in case any meta value has been stored so if I press enter you're going to see that we did store a step which is the name of the column and the table within that step was nothing but the change type now if I just go ahead and extract the step from here s is the lower case so I'm just going to maybe go ahead and do that and that step is nothing but the change type step with all the columns intact where the data is not summarized at the level of change type this is one level in which you can actually stage the queries at the moment I have not duplicated the steps but I have referenced one intermediary step now let me show you another method where you are not hard coding one step let's just say that in this particular query you want a completely dynamic approach that means I will decide which step do I want to extract of all of these steps then you can do that there is no need of hard coding this in the last stage right here all right let's just upgrade our knowledge to reference any step of our will to another query let's just start so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this query for just a quick second so right click and I'll duplicate it because then I'll have the ability to work with all of the steps right here as if it were a new query so I'm going to go ahead and call this as data to just for simplicity reasons and let's just start to work with the query the very first thing that you need to understand is that if you want to take a look at all of the steps you have to convert the entire query into a record let me show you how that is going to work so I'm going to go ahead in the view tab and go over to the advanced editor and in the advanced editor I'm going to go ahead and start to create a record in the first place so I'm just going to say that hey here is the start of the record which is the square bracket and let me just delete the meta that we wrote earlier and here is the end of the record which is the square bracket now I'm going to go ahead and start to give the record or this particular step a name so let's just say that this is my all the steps and all the steps are going to be stored inside of a record and then in the end of the query I'm going to say that from this particular record I want to have all, all the steps which is just one one single thing now at the moment if I just click on commit of this particular query what I'm going to get is a record so if you take a look all the steps are gone this is just a single record and the record is giving us all the steps right here not very helpful but we are still work in progress so let's just go back to the query in the view tab advanced editor let's just start to work with this query a further bit more so I'm going to go ahead and say that hey from all of these steps right here the step that I would want to extract is the last step so I'm just going to control C on that in the square bracket I'm just going to feed that step now the results will start to appear a bit more legible if I click on done we are extracting the last step of the query however we have lost all the steps right here that's fine I'm going to go ahead and click on the advanced editor and in the advanced editor I'm going to again start to write the meta keyword but this time the meta keyword is not going to reference any of the individual steps right here but it's actually going to reference this particular record which contains all of the steps right here so I'm going to go ahead and say the same thing meta in the meta keyword I will say hey the step that I'm trying to refer is all steps and that's pretty much it that's all that I would want to do I click on okay the result doesn't change it's the very same query at the moment but what this has allowed us to do is reference all of these steps as an output now let's just reference this query and see what happens so I'm going to go ahead and right click on the query and I'm going to go ahead and click on reference right here and call this as my reference to now I will have to do the same thing again which is where I use the value dot meta data function to extract what is the meta I click on done now you can see that here we have a step and the step has a record the record will have another record inside of that which is where we have all the steps and now you can extract any of the steps perhaps inserted here and you have it in case you don't want to have it you can delete that and you can perhaps now extract the change type or the promoted header step or maybe the inserted quarter step and we are kind of good to go the only caveat with this particular method is that this is a bit complicated 
complicated. And most importantly, you kind of lose the UI's ability to go alter the steps. Now, at this stage, it's mandatory for you to know and understand the M language. In case you do not understand the M language, I have a brilliant course on helping you understand the M language right from scratch. We talk about the fundamentals first, then we talk about the case studies, and then we also talk about a lot of important Power Query functions. In case you would like to learn M in a very structured way, I think my course is going to absolutely help you do that. In case you're interested, I'm going to leave a link down in the description. Please do check it out. All right, back to the video. Now, in case you would like to extract any of the steps, you can obviously do this using this particular approach. But like I said, you have lost the ability to work with the steps in the user interface, and that's a bit more advanced thing. But it still offers you the staging. That means I am still able to use this particular query just as the way it is. I'm getting the last steps value. But in case I want to reference any of the intermediary steps, I can now do that in reference number two. Slightly complicated, but in case you understand staging, you're going to find this incredibly helpful. The next very important thing that I don't see a lot of people doing is using the ability to organize the queries in folders. And that is super, super helpful. Now, let's just say that we have a bunch of queries right here, and I want to organize them in a way that the user when takes a look at all of the queries, they quickly understand that what queries are what. So I can just go ahead and right click and say that I want to make a new group. There is no new folder option, but a new group option. And I can call this a name. This is my staging right here. And I can also give it a description. The, these are all the queries that do not load. Once we are done with that, I click on OK. And we have a staging folder setup. There's also an other queries folder setup, but that's all right. And I move all the queries that do not load inside of this particular thing. So the data goes in here, the data goes in here, and all the references and the source file also goes in here. And all the references remain right here. Now you can folderize accordingly, depending upon your needs. But creating folders is going to give you a lot of good ability to structure the queries really well. The other very important thing that I see a lot of people missing out, which is absolutely a best practice, is to write comments and notes. And there could be two places where you could write it. You could write it at the step level. That means what this step is doing. You could write it at the query level. And you can also write it at the folder level. Folder level is something that we've already seen it right here. So I just wrote the description and that appears right here. At the step level, you can actually right click on the step and you can actually go to properties to write comments about that particular step. In case you're writing some very complicated formula, something that you're doing that you want the user to understand who's working with your query, you can write all of that right here. This is not a complicated step. I can do that. I can just click on OK. Once you actually write a comment, it actually appears next to this exclamation sign like an info sign. And it actually tells you what that particular step is doing. In case you want to have cautions or any particular thing that the user wants to remember, you can put all of that down in that step and the user is going to take a look at that. The next thing that you can also do is you can write notes at the query level, especially talking about the relevant columns, the granularity of the query and how the query is being structured. So how do you do that? Right click on the query and then you can go on the properties right here to write more things about this query. I can click on OK and this is kind of good to go. Now, if anybody hovers the mouse on top of that, this actually tells about that this query is working in a certain way. This particular thing, when you load the data in Power BI, also shows up when you hover the mouse on top of the table. That's awesome. The next best practice is to lay transparency in your queries. Shorter query does not always means a faster query. Let me help you understand a few concepts around this. Now, let's just say that we have a few steps in right here. And if you take a look at the query, I've added two steps right here called the inserted year, which is where I'm inserting a year off of this particular date. And then in the next step, I'm inserting a quarter. That means what quarter it is, which is right here. Now, can I just go ahead and write both of these steps in a single step? Sure, I can. And let me help you understand that. What do I do about that? So I'm just going to go over to the view tab and click on the advanced editor. Even if you don't understand it, you will be able to structurally understand that what am I trying to do? And then I'll help you understand what makes the query slower actually. So let's just say that I am just renaming this entire step as inserted column, insert calls, because I'm inserting multiple columns. The first column that I insert is the year column. And once I have inserted the year column in this particular step, which is right here, this particular step, I then go ahead and create a quarter column on top of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that, hey, in this particular column, in this particular table, I want to create another step called inserted quarter. So I'm just going to delete this particular thing. I'm going to take the table dot add columns function control C on that and wrap this around in this particular step. So that means table dot add column, the first column is added, then table dot add column, then I'm adding another column on top of that. The another column is nothing but the quarter column. So I'm just going to give it a name, which is quarter. Uh, go ahead right here. And then I'm just going to close on the bracket in the end. Hopefully I have done everything right and this works just fine. The only thing is that now both of the columns, which is the first column of the year and the second column of the quarter are being added in a single step because I have done the wrapper of the function. This particular insert columns, which is actually inserting two columns, should be referenced in the next step right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this particular thing. And I'm just going to say that this is 
nothing but my insert columns. That's it. The query looks fine. I click on done and you can see that now I have reduced the query by one single step. Now, obviously the query looks shorter, at least in the applied steps box, but does that mean that the query is more transparent? The answer is absolutely not. So my opinion is that you can do as many steps as it takes to make the query clear to the end user as to what's going on in case you want to make the query transparent and auditable. This is super, super important. Now you're going to ask me a question that if lesser number of steps right here does not make the query faster, then what actually makes the query faster? Now there is a concept of streaming that you have to understand. Now I can't really display it here, but I'm going to give you a way to think about it and hopefully you will understand the concept of streaming. It's just that I have understood the concept of streaming intuitively by working with a lot of queries, doing a bit of trial and error, but I don't really have anything to show you here in terms of demonstration, but hopefully that will make sense to you. The Power Query Engine is a lazy evaluation engine. That means it doesn't evaluate outright. It says, I'm going to do that and it does that later. So for instance, if your query contains certain transformations of the data that forces the query to perform the step or the transformation right now, the query will tend to slow it down. For example, if you're trying to do some kind of very sophisticated sorting on a very large data, to be able to sort the data, Power Query inherently has to read hundreds and thousands of millions of rows of data in case your data is large. It has to read all of that data and then arrange it in an order which is ascending or descending. Now, because Power Query is a lazy engine, it would not originally do it in case you haven't used the sorting step. But in case you have used the sorting step, it will have to now read the data and then perform that ascending or descending order even to display it on the screen. Another very common example of that is pivoting the data, not unpivoting, but pivoting the data. In pivoting of the data, you're taking rows and rows of data, which is vertical, and you're trying to make it horizontal, something like this. So if you have multiple number of rows, it literally has to read and scan the rows for the unique values, take a look at those unique values and convert those unique values in the form of columns. It would not be able to do that unless it reads all of the data. So intuitively, you should check your query that have you broken the stream of the query? Are you asking the query to perform certain operations that it has to do now, which is breaking its intuitive lazy behavior. If you do that, your query tends to become smaller. But in my opinion, when you're working with standard Power Query operations, try to make your query more transparent and not necessarily shorter. But instead, what you should look for to make your queries faster is that have you broken the stream of the query or not? In short, are you asking Power Query to not be lazy and be active? And that is going to make your query slower, not reducing the number of steps. The next best practice is super important, which is where you can use Power Query to structure your models into a nice and tidy star schema. Now, how do you do that? I've got a great case study, which is where I'll talk about a very specific price increase model, which is where you will see me structuring the model in a star schema using Power Query to be able to make my DAX ridiculously simple. And that's the video that I would want you to watch next. Cheers.